Hi there, this is Kathy Crow at the Crow Cottage and happy Memorial Day to you. It is a lovely weekend. We had so many storms over the weekend that it was pretty exciting, but uh, it has calmed down. Still a little wind, a little bit. It's nice. It's really nice and warm and sunny. So I hope you're having a good weekend. This is a good weekend to get out in our way. We had a pretty empty church, I think, yesterday. So um, that's probably typical of you know, most places on the weekend anyway, sometimes, but on this Memorial Day weekend, it's probably really common. And I hope everyone stayed safe because we had some pretty wild <laughs> storms coming through. So I am going to do Magnolia Moo today. Now this is available. I'm so glad because as I was looking to see what wasn't available, I knew a lot of the stuff I was going to use wasn't because I'm using some old things. So I'm also using this retired set called Today's Tiles. This was actually one of my favorite sets and I never used it as much as I wanted to. So I make sure anything I like, I make sure I get it out and use it. So especially during the summer, this is a good time to kind of get out some old things and put it in with the new stuff too. I also am using an old die set that I keep going back to. It's called, I think it's Celebration Dies. I actually put it on the back side of my um, Country Corners dies because they're similar in size. It had like a very, very giant one on the outside and this inner one pretty big too but it's even too big for the card I'm doing today so uh, celebrations labels is what that one was called if you are looking for it it is old you'll have to find a retired version of it and I have no idea what stamps that it came with I just keep those things on the side there by my desk so that I have it ready to go so I'm gonna cut out I've already cut out the white piece. This is gonna have my sentiment on it and our flowers. The f Magnolia Mood flowers are really big, so uh, you kinda have to do an oversized card for those, I think. There's a lot of things you can do, though, with it. We'll talk about that as we go. Thank you so much for joining me and sharing my video and all that. I'm gonna try to get this down, and we will see. Yay, it actually went and smooth and I think it's pretty good, right? As is, we'll see as I get it going on the side. I kind of have to, um, I have to look at it over here on the computer to see. And every time I ever do this, it's like, I, I never do it right. And <laughs> so excuse me as I take a minute to see what I'm doing because um, I never do it right. And then I can't find it. And then it just takes a long time. Ah, good. I did find it. Hey, that looks actually pretty good. Let me get us to that page so I can see comments as they come in. And uh, today is a day I doubt that anyone's going to be with me much, but you never know. Sometimes a holiday, yeah, uh, people um, have a few more minutes than they normally would. So you never know. And not that way, that way. Okay, that's probably about as good as we're going to get it. And um, let me adjust my board just a little bit. I want to make sure you're seeing everything here um, because otherwise it, I, I start working in the corner down here and, and, and no one sees what I'm doing. I'm also using a Distress. This is Tasteful Textile. Um, in my note, I wrote down Distress Tile 3D. This is a an embossing folder we have that's... Not the same as this one, but it gives you the same kind of, it, it's, a, it's a texture one. It's not the same at all. I just happen to really like te tasteful textiles. It's one that I'm going to use for a very long time. And um, it's easy to flatten out the surface if you want to, because that's what we're going to do with this card. We are going to emboss this after I've done some other things with it, but then I'm going to flatten out this surface in the center because I want to be able to see where I stamp my sentiment. I want it, that to be nice and crisp. And um, of course, you could, I've tried it, it works sort of. You can mask your you know, you're embossing by putting things in it and then it kind of leaves a, 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 a portion that's embossed and a center part that's not as, embo as embossed. I actually haven't liked that method all that well. I don't find it to be all that useful for me, so I'm not doing it. Now, opal rounds, this must be old. I thought it was new. I don't know. 
I mean, things are going in and out of orderability so fast right now that it's like, it's craziness. Magnolia Mood is not even in the catalog, of course, but it is an online exclusive. So if you go to the online exclusive section, you'll find this, and this is a really pretty one. It's, it is orderable. I saw it, but I didn't see it in the new catalog when I was leaking through this, and I'm just looking really quick to see if Opal Rounds, I looked at Opal Rounds and um, and I could not find it online. So I maybe this is an old one and I didn't realize it. Um, this, the catalog, you wanna get used to using this index. It does have everything indexed pretty well. And over here is where it says embellishments. And this is gonna get you in the general realm. It's 111 and 109. So at least you can kind of get an idea of where it is in the catalog. It doesn't list everything there, but it does list, I do not see 111, oh, there they are. So here they are. And, oh, and it didn't even list that page. That is 114, and what, that is nuts. Let me look back here again at this index. <laughs> I think I might need to fix that because um, it should say one page 114 and 115. Okay, adhesive backed embellishments, page 115. So it does give you this page at least. And um, I'm looking for this one and I don't see it. It might have come with a suite, so it's not in here. Anyway, it's just called Opal Rounds, but it was not online. And I don't really see ones that are similar, but they're clear. And I'm going to color it for the pink card. I'm going to color it so that I get the color that I want. Anyhow, we're going to just go ahead and talk about it. Oh, excellent. Thank you, Margaret. You are so sweet. I sure appreciate you setting your alarm. And in Phoenix, Becky in Phoenix, are you there too? Um, you know, Phoenix, how warm is it? It's pretty, it's getting toasty here today. Not Phoenix warm. We have relatives that used to live in um, um not Phoenix. What's the one? It's not Ma It's not Mesa. Um, was it Mesa? I don't know. But anyway, it's beautiful, beautiful for desert desert folk. Um, <laughs> if you like the heat, it's wonderful. All right, opal round. So that's what I've got. I also am using for this card. I'm using an old. This is from our masking. We don't have any masks like this. How come we don't? Because I keep saving them in this. I keep, as they come and go, I take them, I take them and shove them into this, this uh, die holder that I had from some dies. I don't know what. And, um, and so it keeps getting fatter and fatter, but I, I do like to use them. So I think this is the artistic mix masks from 2023 but i do have several i've got them all listed here i don't think it's the four square one and there was also one called decorative masks that are in here but i do believe this was probably the 2023 but i don't know i'm not sure i've cut out one of the countryside corners pieces just from some parchment type, just paper it's not special parchment or anything it's just paper it just happened to be a scrap and I'm going to show you how we're going to use that in a minute. So let's do, um, I think for fun, I love this one because I'm into yellow right now. But I'm going to do my bubble bath one first. This is the big one. So I think this is going to be helpful for you to kind of get an idea of how big of a card you need to make if you want to use all of these stamps in the card. It's hard to fit this all on a on our standard five and a half by um four and a quarter so it this one is not that and i'm going to grab my ruler here really fast so we can see what our measurements are so this is a big one it's kind of a little bulky squarish it's normally i would have if it's going to be this wide i would normally have this card here but i didn't want that much going on so we went ahead and this one is nine and three quarters by six. Now, my dimensions are out of that a tiny, tiny bit bigger, but nine and a three quarters by six is gonna be uh, more manageable for you. And then uh, this is looking like 
almost to five here. So let's say it's 10. I think I'm gonna go ahead with 10. And then um, that is gonna make it a tiny bit wider. And if we're gonna do that, we're gonna go with six and one fourth then. This is actually gonna make this card a tiny bit bigger than I've got it here. But it's sure gonna be a lot easier with our dimensions if we work on uh, regular standard ones instead of um, funky, you know, six and three, three sixteenths and that sort of thing. I really dislike it when I end up doing stuff like that. That every time I've ever made a card like that, I <laughs> thought, why didn't you just go, go size it up or down a little? It's not, you know, you don't have to do that. So in that case, this bubble bath pink piece, we are going to do just the front because to save costs, I use my colored cardstock mostly just as a front, and then I use white or vanilla for my base card, and it, uh, and that way I can cut cut some of the cost of it, and um, and it is a little these this this cardstock's less bulky than this too, so it does make it a tiny bit less bulky. So let's go with this width. This we decided was gonna be five inches. Okay, that's pretty wide. Let's see how that works out. So five inches wide by six and one fourth. So I'm gonna have to get my arm out here. Six and one fourth. And then that's pretty standard looking. It's not gonna be too bad. I'm gonna have to use my mask around on the edge a bit more. I've got some little fuzzies on the edge because my blade needs to be replaced. And I keep, I don't do it because it's not that hard to just snip off my fuzzy edges. And then I think I'll just go ahead and cut my other, while I have this out, let's get all of our cardstock cut. So the white cardstock that's gonna be the base card for this, you will want it to be 10 inches. Okay, so we're gonna go 10 inches. And we're gonna score that at five. Okay, and then we're at six and one fourth. And I'm gonna lay this right on top and make sure that I'm getting it, rather than measuring to the six and one fourth edge, I'm gonna make sure it's actually lining up with my bubble bath piece so that I don't have to trim with my scissors later because otherwise my measurements sometimes aren't exact there. So that'll be good. And then with our yellow one, this one I think is standard. I used the dye in Magnolia mode that's this flowery dye. So I think, yes, this is four and a fourth. So this one's gonna be just your standard one. And I don't really even need to cut my white, I don't think, but I'll go ahead and cut it anyway. Cause I am gonna use this dye to, um, to cut out the magnolia mood flower. So I'll set that aside and we'll get that in a minute. Um, my lemon lolly. This is, do you guys like lemon lolly? I love this color. It's so pretty. We're going to go four and a quarter. Um, let's go five and a half just because it'll store better in my little scrap basket. So four and a quarter is the going to be the width and then five and a half is the length for this. This is going to be the front of the next card. So I just need this one to be scored four and a quarter lengthwise. Four and a quarter. And then five and a half. Okay, five and a half for the score line. And then this is going to be the second card that we work on. Okay, so we're pretty much done with my my cutting board. I think we can put that away for now. Um, sometimes I keep my little white scraps. You never know. That one's pretty small. I don't know if I'll need that one. And I should have scored this while I had it out, but I'll stick it on the side and remember that that is scored and ready to go. And, and I want to take my 
other scraps that I'm not using and set them aside here, but not in the way where I'm gonna wonder what, what I did with them. All right, so for this card, let's go ahead and stamp our, um, our image and we'll get that colored. This is such a pretty set. I, just, I had that other Magnolia set and I got it out to compare to see if I really wanted to buy another Magnolia flower. And, um, and then I looked at the cards that I've made with that set and I thought, you know, I do really like the detail that is on this one. It's, um, the other one was really pretty too, but I do think I like the detail on this. I think I'm going to stamp it with just basic gray. I'm not sure if I used black or basic gray, but I'm going to use basic gray and we're going to see how that looks. And then if I don't like it, I'm going to go with our tuxedo black, but I want to try the gray. See, that's pretty, pretty dark. I don't really want it any darker than that. And we're only going to do the one because I'm, the other card doesn't use this, these stamped images at all. In Missouri, you know, Memorial Days are a really big day because um, unlike where we lived before, where people did not visit their cemeteries all that much here, people really do pay attention to things. Now, this one, we're only going to use one of it. Let me grab another block. It's going to fit this stamp a bit better. And we'll stamp that one there. And then we're going to use, for the other flowers, we are going to do this one two times. And one of them I'm not going to re-ink. I'm going to just use the stamp off method with it. I think I might need the spare leaf too. So they give you the bud that I just did. And then this flower, they give you a spare leaf. And then this little flower there. We're going to do this one full strength for the first one and then just stamp off the second one. I pressed pretty hard and you can see I left a little edge there because I did that. So um, that's just, you know, if you don't trim the edges of your rubber stamps, these clean stamps, sometimes you have that issue if you're pressing really hard down. So we're cutting these out with a die, it's not gonna matter. And this one, I'm gonna do the same way, and I'm gonna do a couple of extras just in case. I think I want to stick extras in there. You can't have too many leaves sometimes, and you can use those on the inside of your card too. It's kind of pretty. I like this set too because it has, this is a sentiment we're gonna use, just a note to let you know that you are loved, and it has the two different fonts, and um, and not all the stamp sets have that. And I, it's a good good width for this for this little um, a, yeah, you know, for the size card we're doing. You kind of need a big a big one. All right, now you're going to need to get out your bubble bath pens because the colors we're using are bubble bath and we're going to start with that. So let me bring you down here a little bit and we're going to see um, how easy it is to color this. I've got bubble bath, I've got two of these and I do think I need another color. Let's test this. So when I want to do these, um, let me the bullet point you will get a little bit more ink. It'll be darker. So if you want to see how is this going to blend, like is this lighter than this or is it going to be almost the same? See, to me that looks uh, it isn't the same, but it's so close that to get a shade going there, I've got to have a darker color. So any pink that you have that's darker is going to work. Um, you know, I'm gonna break the mold here, and I think I'm going to get out, uh, I think I'm gonna get out Melon Mambo. My, my berry verse is pretty dark. How about we try, before we do Melon Mambo, which is really, really dark, let's try Polished Pink. I think the dark Polished Pink is gonna be 
pretty dark, so not the dark one. Let's try the lighter one. That's pretty good. That is going to work in a pinch, but I do want to try our light melon mambo, and let's see how much darker it is. Mm -hmm. So this is what we're going to use. We're going to use light melon mambo as the shading part. And this is bubble bath. Where's the one that I just had? Polished pink. And this is polished. That's dark polished pink. I've confused myself. Light melon mambo, I think, is what I'm using. Not, not polished pink. Light polished pink. Okay, I'm confusing myself. Or was it light polished pink? Now I don't remember. That one's too dark, so yes it is. It's, it's polished pink. Okay, so we're using, we're gonna use dark polished pink. Let's try that. No, that is too dark. Okay, 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 okay. It is light polished pink. So we're gonna use light polished pink and I'll probably use light bubble bath. And um, let me show you how I do this. Now there's no rule. The rule is if you wanna practice your coloring, practice. If you want to get really good at coloring, practice. Follow several people, see how they do it, and then adjust it to what makes sense and works for you. I look at the lines and then I'm going to, that is not dark enough. What was I thinking? We're going to go with dark polished pink just a little tiny bit around all of these edges. Okay, um, not try to keep it somewhat random. Where the lines are darkest is where you're gonna to wanna to use your darkest pen. And you don't need it to be covering and everything, for sure. This flower is gonna be one color. I'm not trying to do anything too fancy. You know, magnolias are really beautiful, aren't they? Do you like them? I haven't really, I, when we went to California, my daughter took us to a wonderful park there. This was a couple of years ago and they the mat we happened to be there when the magnolias were in full bloom. Oh man, I have never before then and since then smelled magnolias that were scented nicely. You know, I thought they were just really pretty flowers. So I suppose they have them here in Missouri. I mean, the scented ones. I don't know because we don't have any in our yard. I've got a star magnolia. I did buy one of those a couple of years ago and it's beautiful, but I think it might have a little scent. I'm not really sure. Do you know about star magnolia? It's the white one, the little white one's like a bush instead of a tree. It's cute. It actually can grow into a tree. They have them down at the Nathaniel Green Park as a tree because they've had them a long time. I doubt that we will see ours get to a tree, but who knows? There's a lot of water here, so it could be. So that was our dark polished pink. Now take your light polished pink and just kind of go over the edges of that. Shading upward from that. And it, we're not gonna, I'm not gonna labor this one, okay? This is, this is going to be good. It's it's such a pretty one that you don't have to like super fuss over the colorings. And you know what? You could use your pencils and get a really nice effect. Now where the shading is is light, light lines, go ahead and use this next, next darker pink color on those. And I think you're gonna really, really like what you get. My rose bush, we had a rose bush. I thought it was Bellanoma. Bellanoma, that doesn't sound right. Bellaroma. <laughs> Bellanoma almost sounds like a disease or something. Bellaroma. Oh man, I had one back in the Tri Cities. It was beautiful yellow with pink and peach, and dark, dark pink edges, and it smelled. That's why it was Bellaroma. It had this wonderful rose scent and it was prolific. Bloomed like crazy, which believe me, in the Tri-Cities heat did not happen for many flowers. Well, I planted one of those and it died this last winter. So when they went on sale, I ordered another one 
got it in and it's blooming and it is not Bella Roma. Now I either put the wrong label on it, which unfortunately is very possible. They, you know, the labels come off as you're planting. I had four to plant, so I don't think I did that, but you know, it's possible. But I, I think if I don't see Bella Roma coming up in our yard, that one's gonna, I'm gonna tell them, look, I know Bella Roma and this is no Bella Roma. Okay, light bubble bath for the edge. Now, I'm not going to color some of the edge part. I'm going to just go around here. We're going to leave some of this white. If you leave a little bit of it white, it's going to give you a little bit better highlighting. So I'm going to go like this with my bullet tip for these parts. And try to leave a little bit of white edge. Now, if I've got way too much color to blend in, I really can't do that. But like here, I can. I can do that. Okay, on here, I'm going to leave that white. And I'm just going to take a tiny bit of color there. I'm going to leave a bunch of that white. Where you have more area to color, go ahead and use your brush pen because it's going to go a lot faster. But if you're trying to leave some of the edge white, it is harder to do that when you're using the brush edge. This one, I don't think I need to use. I don't need a lot of light white on the edges on this one. Do not push down hard on your, your tip. It's going to wipe it out pretty fast if you do that. So it's just color gent gentle, gentle, gentle. These are too expensive to wear out. you got to be a little careful on them. Okay, so once that feels like you're getting it blended a little bit better, if there are parts you want to blend a bit more, take this is dark bubble bath. And I'm going to try to work that in a little bit more. If you go out of the edge, you know, out, don't worry about it. Because remember, you're going to cut these. These are die cuts. You're going to cut them anyway. I, that's another reason I love these die cut images. Because then if I need to rush my coloring, I can. I don't have to labor it too much. Okay, almost there. It, the coloring, the coloring on the other one's not going to happen. Remember that one is different and much faster. So if you're thinking, man, is she going to color both of them like this? No, we're not. Now I left the white edge. So we still want to blend those, though. You know. So let me show you how we're going to do that. Put your your pens back together again. If you keep them together like I do. Now, if you want to be part of somebody's team, you see these labels. I finally, this year, they're different because these are mine. Um, I may, finally made my own list of labels so that I can update them with the new colors every year and uh, get all of my stuff labeled a little bit better. And I'm gonna, and I shared that with my team. Now, other teams do the same thing, but make sure you're on a good team where you're getting plenty of uh, support in all the different ways that you want it. And right now, we have our join offer going that we have only, Stampin' Up! is only doing it for a couple more days. I, it means to the end of May. It's coming up, the end. So you want to get in there on it as quick as you can. I think I'm going to use soft sea foam with Shy Shamrock. Let's see what happens when I do that. I never really know what I'm going to do. Because <laughs> I'm greens right now. I'm using different greens. I'm using, still using a lot of soft succulent. I love that one. I think the dark Shy Shamrock will be a good enough edge. Yeah, that's pretty good. We're going to stick with that. And that's the dark edge for all of these little leaves. Oh, so pretty. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. 
it's tempting to just try to really be careful and get in all the get all these lines. Like if I was doing this without you watching, I would be more um, deliberate to get this whole edge like this. But um, for online purposes, um, nobody's gonna be wanting to watch that for two. I you I had a friend, a loved friend who unfortunately passed away. She was the only one <laughs> who said, "I love watching you color online because it's so relaxing." <laughs> so um, she's the only one I know who liked to do that, though, because you know, again, like I said, coloring is something you have to practice on your own to really get good at it you just have to make yourself if you don't like coloring but you want to color better it's just like any discipline you do have to make yourself practice it's not as much fun when you're first doing it because the results you want are not going to happen i'm just going to tell you honestly it takes a little bit of effort but it doesn't take that long once you just make yourself do it a bit. You will get better. And then you will learn more about what kinds of things you like to to color that are not quite as painful as other. You also learn what kind of mediums you like. Whether you like, I have one of our ladies on our team so good at watercoloring. Oh my goodness, she's so much better than that, uh, than I am at that. She's so good at it. Every time I see her watercolors, I just, oh. My goodness, I wish I could do that. Well, she likes to do things that are messy more than I do, and that's partly why she's so much better at it. Watercoloring to me is like, oh man, I, I like the control of the pen, and I'd like to be able, I'd rather have me get letter less, I guess, precision so that I can just get it done. That's me, but it's not everybody. So you, you got to make... You gotta find what works for you. You'll get better at it if you do. I think we're gonna do our dark soft sea foam. I'm gonna see how that's gonna lay on with this color. Some colors blend better than others. And this is a yellowy type one. I know it's gonna be very light color. That's even too light. So let's find something else. I might need to find something um, maybe more yellowish than or not yet, more bluish than yellowish. I do break out my um, Copic pens when I am on my own because um, I find that there are some light Copic pens that I need to blend with. Now this is soft succulent, it is retired, but that one's gonna blend this color pretty well. And, uh, and then I won't have to spend quite so much time here. I'm going to go ahead and just color all of these leaves. And then I'm going to come back in and try to get some of that lighter um, color back into it. Where it's going to be a little darker than I want right at the moment. But for speed, I want to get this done. The, this There's a fair amount of leaves. And, uh, and I don't want to take too much time to color. So we're going to go ahead and this soft succulent is going to blend all of those greens together pretty well. And this is the light soft succulent. It's going to do that really well. What am I going to do when my light soft succulents are all gone? And I don't want to use a Copic pen to replace it well. Um, I suspect Stampin' Up! will have another one by then. I always buy extras when it's a color I use a lot of. So and before the color, before the, before it's gone, I just get, oh, probably two sets of that color for the pens. And then I try to be careful not to overuse it until Stampin' Up! comes out with another color that's very similar. Lost Lagoon is pretty close to this. Maybe I'll get it out. I think it's a little darker but it is, it's pretty close. So it's possible it might, it might be light enough. This one's pretty light. Now you can, it does kind I found it ruins our tips. So I, I would not recommend what I'm going to tell you. But if you want to get, you don't want to, if you want to not buy Copic pens and you don't want to use pencils, which I think is the other best option, um, you can, here's our Lost Lagoon. Doesn't that look similar? Here's the light Lost Lagoon. It's very, very close to my soft succulent. 
In fact, I think it's even a little lighter, maybe. I don't know. It looks so much the same that it's it's you could definitely use that instead. Um let's try the color lifter. So if you did what I did and you want it to be lighter in some areas, just use your color lifter to kind of give you an area on the leaf that's a little lighter. Just if you get ink on the tip, make sure you're cleaning it off. I'm not doing it a ton, so I'm probably not getting a lot of color. Oops, I don't want to do it there. I pretty much just want to do it where the light is going to be on the tip of these leaves. The brightest. Okay, so this is one thing you can do. I don't do this all that often. I usually just try to color better. Um, you can do this with your edges too. This is gonna blend that area in that you wanted to keep white, but it's gonna blend it in with the ink on the sides too. And um, I checked to make sure my green wasn't on it, and I don't think it was, so I'm not gonna worry about the pink until, if it gets pink on my lifter, I'm not gonna I'm not going to worry about that until we're all done here. This, I wouldn't use this if you've got, if you wanted to put a yellow in with your magnolia, then use the your lightest, like light lemon lolly, and then you can, it'll lighten it up with a nice yellow, but I wanted some white because we're just going to do bubble bath is our color. So I still don't see, I'm thinking my pen's pretty dry. Because if I had, um, if I had, that is super dry. <laughs> okay, so this is what you do. <laughs> now, this is what I was telling you. I wouldn't recommend doing this. If your pen has expired and it is dry because my, my alcohol is gone now in my color lifter. That was actually quite dry. And I didn't even realize that until I saw there was no color coming out anymore. It doesn't ruin this nib quite so much, but you can just pull these out. And I can feel like that thing is dry. Don't let it get completely dried out. This is just alcohol blending solution. You can get this at any craft store. But... Um, I'm gonna fill up my barrel and then I'm gonna put this right back in there. Now, because mine's so dry, it is gonna slide right in there and it wasn't difficult at all because it's like super dry, okay? Now this nib, it doesn't tend to ruin too much. It's gonna be fine. But I find that after I've done this with the pens that I've done this just to get my colors to last a little longer, um, it frayed and ruined my brush tip nib pretty quickly. And um, so that's why I wouldn't recommend, I really wouldn't recommend this, but I'm doing it anyway. So I just put in a bunch of that and um, I'll put some here, even though I'm probably going to regret it. I'm going to use that there. And I do want to get it off my board. If you've got a glass board like this, that alcohol, I don't know, it's like it etches it or something. So I'm going to get this off. It should, it should soak in there pretty good. If you are doing that with a colored pen, just make sure you don't use much. It will dilute your color for one thing, and um, you won't. It won't. It will be diluted, which is nice if you want your color to not be quite as strong. But if you do want it to be as strong as it was, it won't be. I'm just going to tell you, it won't be. And um, so you've got to be aware of that. Okay, let me. I need to dry that off. My, I don't see my my towel. Where are you? I'm going to grab a tissue and dry that off. Okay, let's see if I can. There we go. 
There we go. Now it's blending a bit. And now you should be able to see some color on the edge. If if there's no color, that means you're you're still working with pretty dry conditions. Let's try the brush edge and see if it's still pretty dry. That is amazing. I put quite a bit of that in the barrel. There, now it's finally coming out. Hmm. Pretty interesting. I'm still not seeing much pink on there. Hmm. Okay, well, anyway, there is some coming out, so we're good. You can see it lifting the color there. That's why it's called a color lifter. And normally I would be seeing color on there. I just still think it's pretty dry. So there's not any, anyway. I do like this effect, it's nice. It does lift that, it just goes right in there and kind of washes some of that color out. And then you can get it to be you can get those white edges. Now, another thing you can do for these, um, if you are wanting highlights, just to make it a little bit more, you know, stand out a bit more, you can use your white gel pen and you can give just a tiny bit of white to these tips. But the other thing is you, you can go light or dark, however you prefer. So you can do that with these, just a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see. No. You have to, it's a matter of contrast. There, I got that one off. The other thing about the gel pen, if you go out of the lines, <laughs> That sometimes can help that issue a little bit if if this is matching your cardstock really well. Um, another thing that somebody did though that was new to me is they took a an emery board and just sanded off the paper where the ink had gone over the edge. As long as it's hasn't gone all the way through to the back yet, um, it, it it's actually sands it away. It's pretty shocking how nifty that worked. All right, um, wh what I need to do after I get these pens shoved back into my box is um, show you just again how to get a little bit more contrast there if you want. Just get out your same pen that you had that you were using as the dark version. So we were using light, or, um, I think we were using light polished pink mostly. And you can just kind of go back over some of these areas just to get a little bit more dark color again, right back where you wanted it. Just because you want, you want contrast, okay? So if you washed out a whole bunch with that blending pen and you just need a little bit more of this back, just put it right back in. Like right here. These are the parts that would be concave, so they would be darker. If you use your bullet tip, you can be a little more precise. Okay, I'm feeling like I'm spending a lot of time here. I actually like to color, so for me, it's like, oh, I, I want it a little bit, a little more, a little more. Oh, I can do that a little bit more, and for anyone watching, like, dying. Okay, we are going to be done, whether we are done or not, and then let me see if we can see everything again pretty good. Um, I don't want to, I want to get everything cut out in one go, so... I'm gonna set this guy aside for a minute, all right? Because the background we're gonna use is on a petal pink. So let's grab the, now this is the base that's going on the card. 
And I actually want, since we used some polished pink, I think I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna make, we're gonna put this, the, we're gonna use this for the masking. And I'm gonna cut another base card that's gonna be polished pink. It'll be a little bit darker. Um, so, I don't know, let me look at polished pink. I might want a, a different, I might go with flirty flamingo or something, because polished pink's pretty bright. I don't really want polished pink. What's this? Well, blushing bright, I bet you would work. You're just a little bit, a little bit of a different pink. I need something to stand out just a bit. Well, I don't know. Maybe I'll go ahead and just, we'll do a, a little different edge with our cardstock. Because I'm just not really liking that combination too much. If I do flirty flamingo, that's going to be way too dark. Polished pink is going to be too dark. What is this? This must be polished pink. I think I lost the... Yeah, it is. Okay. All right. Okay, never mind. I'll, I'm, I'm not going to do that after all. Hmm, let me think about this. We're going to use... We'll just cut another piece from the other one. All right, so what we want to do is do the masked bit for right behind this flower. And um, you can take your tape and tape it on. If you're, if you're careful, you don't really even have to worry about it all that much. But I'm going to go ahead and we're going to tape this on here. So we're going to cut all those edges off anyway. Okay, I'm going to take that down there. And then we're going to use our, um, we're going to use bubble, our bubble bath, but I'm wondering if I want to do polished pink. Let's see. Let's give it a try. So polished pink, we're going to see what you look like. I might have used I mean bubble bath. I might have used polished pink. Use one of your blending brushes. You've got your, the, you know, mask that you want on here. And I'm going to just do a little bit and see, because I don't think that's going to be dark enough. Let me look. Yeah, it's not, it's not quite the pink I want. So we're going to do, instead of that one, we're going to use polished pink. And you can see that's much darker. Now I didn't tape it down here, so I do need to be <laughs> a little cautious. I want to make sure it's all my paint cardstock underneath isn't shifting. Okay, that should be pretty good. Let's have a look and see. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Okay, I am gonna take this off. Get all the tape off and then you need to clean up your, your mess. That's my mess. Okay, I think I got all the tape off. I'm gonna get the tape off of me after I clean this part off. Make sure you have something that you can clean your mask off. I always just take it right to the sink and and clean it off really thoroughly that way. But um, what did I do with my my cloth that I had here right a second ago? What did I do with it? Oh, there you are. Okay, so we're going to wipe this down first. Just because I can't really just take it to the sink right here with you, but I will in a minute. 
And then we'll, I mean, not, not in a minute. I will when I'm finished here. I'll wash that off really good because you want to make sure it's really clean so that you don't have to mess with it when you go to use it again. All right. We have been, Jeff and I have been happily watching the little bunnies in the back. They have been so cute. Oh, I, you know what I did? I forgot. I'm leaving the center. I totally forgot I'm leaving the center. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What a ding-dong. Oh, well, you know what we're going to do. I, I did not leave the center bare, and I wanted to. What I, what I did is I colored it. That's what I did. You ding-dong. All right, so we're going to have to start again on a piece of white cardstock. Wow. <laughs> so let's cut my white cardstock. We want this to be, I'm going to go ahead and cut it at five inches. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll trim it down later. We're going to go five by six and one fourth. This is the size of this card, and then we're gonna trim it down after I've done the sponging, but we've already done some of the sponging. I'm gonna have to do double sponging, because what I wanna do is I, our flowers are gonna go here. I need my country cottage to be right in the center here, because we wanna keep this center part white. Why did I not remember that's what I was doing? I don't know. Now this time I can't use scotch tape because I can't use something too, too terribly sticky. You could use a post-it note, but I'm gonna just use some washi tape instead. I think I've got some that's pretty easy to take off. Or some painter's tape. I probably have some of that laying around somewhere too. But the we want to keep the edges nice because they're they're gonna show. So I'm gonna just do this right where the flower is probably gonna be. So if it tears off a little bit when I pull this off, um, it'll be underneath where my flower is. So it won't be quite such a tragedy. Okay. So get this centered in here, however you want it. It does not have to be perfect. You just want it to be centered. You're gonna be trimming some of the edges off. Okay, I'm gonna lay that down. Now, I'm gonna to have to grab a different pink brush because I do want my edge to be bubble back. Okay, we want it to match the actual cardstock. So this is our bubble bath. And make sure this is straight. It's looking pretty straight. I'm gonna keep my hand in the center. Ooh, sorry about that. We're gonna keep, eh, I'll just keep my hand in here. All right, so get your bubble bath and we're gonna just color my cardstock a little bit. Like this. <laughs> you know, it. this is just a technique that kind of looks cool. I am going to say that if you just cut out a white label of the Country Cottage, it's, it's very close to the same. It looks the same. It's just not quite the same effect, um, but it, it looks very similar. So you can save yourself this step by doing that, but... I thought, well, I'm not going to, I'm not, the reason we are watching this today instead of me writing out the tutorial is that it would have been, it would have been slightly difficult for me to describe this process without so many words that it starts to just get really confusing. Okay, so now that we're done with that, we can, we got to leave that mask, that, that right on because we've got to do the mask again. So we're gonna lay the mask on here again. Hmm. All right, we're gonna go right in the middle here. It's gonna help me kind of see my edges that are gonna get cut off. 
Okay, now this time I need to make sure that this is taped down really good. So I'm gonna use this because we're sort of taping my paper and the mask all in one go. I don't want that paper to shift around at all. Okay, I need to have more of the mask showing there though. Oops, I just shifted it. There we go. I hope that didn't shift that underneath. <laughs> I don't think it did. I hope not. Oh well, if it did, oh well. Okay, and then we'll use our polished pink. And I think I better, just to be on the safe side, we're gonna, we're gonna go like this and like that. Okay. Now for that polished pink again. Now remember, we've got our masked part underneath there. So we should be able to go on here pretty strongly and not worry about that too much. But we don't have to sponge the center really much at all because that part is, is covered. Okay, that should, should have worked really well. It did when we were doing it on the other, the other one, it looked beautiful. But I'm gonna do this before I untape it because I'm getting my, I'm starting to get my hands pretty inky. All right. Looks good. Love it. Love, love, love that. These masks are so inexpensive. You can do so many things with them. So I would really encourage you to get get them if they're different from the masks we have in the catalog right now those are specific to flowers and they're nice i do like them i just i prefer these background ones um myself oh, let me wipe my board down get it dry let's remove those before i ink those up onto something I have to be careful where I'm sticking these. I don't want to get ink all over the place. All right. There we go. Very good. So now you can see you've got your nice center. It's all white and ready to ready to use. We're not going to use this. Um. Now you're going to what? What you want to do is just trim this to the size that you want it. Okay. We are going to do. Remember our card base. I'm not even using this now, um, but I'm going to save it because I can definitely use it on another card. But um, I still want to use this as our our base. Okay, so this is six, uh, six and one quarter by five. So let's first of all trim off the edges that didn't get any of the of the masking on it. And then we'll see what our dimensions are after that. Cause that might, that's looking pretty short. So I think that will be just fine for that width. And then this is going to be, it's gonna, we're gonna end up taking a, about um, an eighth off of each side. It looks like this is the wider side. So let's start here. And then we'll cut this one off. Let's check again. This is five inches. So I actually want it to be about there at four and seven or three fourths. And then check to see how that's gonna look on your card. Perfect. Now that is gonna be perfect. We wanna emboss this. 
okay because we want to have that texture that's kind of what why this is such a great card is I can feel all of this texture on it as well as see the printed texture I love texture and it can be added really very very easily and it it, it totally distinguishes your cards from store bought cards I mean they're just like so much nicer than because you've got all kinds of really you don't have to layer it up to get it to look that great it's just little techniques like this that make a difference so um again the I lost my sticky note there it is we don't have the embossing folder that I am using today but the distressed tile 3d would work just as well I'm going to use my tasteful textiles barely going to fit in here I'm going to have a little bit of the edge hanging out a little bit I the distressed tile one's probably bigger it actually might work better I don't know this one's a little more random. The tile one has some design, and I didn't really want any design going on it at all. If it bugs you that there's an edge there that's not embossed, then you can, especially with this one, you can just emboss it again with that edge inside. It's not going to hurt it to do this. And you can emboss it. This one is such a random, easy, very, it's not 3D. It's um, it's not at all 3D. And so that means I can kind of run it through as often as I want to. And it's not going to, it's not going to really mess it up at all. Then I get all my edges done. Okay, so that is that. Now let me show you how you can get this smoothed out. Because I want to remember, I want to stamp my sentiment here, and I but I wanted this all textured. But I want this ed these edges textured more than here. So it's very easy to do. Just take your bone folder and just smooth it out. You can even if you, if it's like the whole thing across. Um, you can roll it through with just those plates and flatten it out. But I just need it to be flattened out where the sentiment's going to be stamped, pretty much. Okay, so I'm just flattening it out right there. Just kind of be easy so that you don't tear the paper. The paper fibers get weakened when you take it through the embossing. And remember, I'm not trying to remove all of the texture. I'm just, just getting rid of the edges that are raised. You can even take a block, kind of push it on there. And that's going to flatten that out really nice. Okay, now I'm ready for my sentiment. So I, I did the stamping with the flower in, in gray. So did I put my gray away? Yes, I did. That's what we want back out again. We're going to use that. It'll be nice and dark. I really like the Pebble Path. Do you like that one? That's a beautiful, beautiful gray. So just a note to let you know that you are loved. We're going to stick that, we're going to do it crosswise here, right here, okay, and then we can put our flowers on it, we'll assemble this card, and this one is done. Once you've done all of that, we'll get all of our flowers cut out and, uh, and, and adhered. And that one's pretty much finished already. So it's just a matter of putting all my doodads away so that I don't get things lost. I need that for the dies. Okay, that is going to go there like this. 
Okay, if when you put it on, if you, if like for me, my borders here are a little wider than on the sides. So I might actually want to trim one of those down to make that work better, but you don't have to. I know some people would be really particular and probably measure it all out. I don't need to do that. Take our little dies and let's try to do the big one first. I might have to, my magnet sometimes doesn't grab things all that great. Let's do this. And then by doing this too, I can save my little scrap of white here on the side. There it is, like that. Perfect. Jeff and I have discovered that there's a nice little um, ground, ground, are they groundhogs or rock chucks? What did he say? I think they're big <laughs> in our neighbor's backyard. I don't know if they know that it, they live under their shed, but I, they do. And they're getting bigger every year, I think, because um, I've seen them before. This year, there's a whole little family of them. And I bet that they're eating her garden some. Uh-oh, this is shifting. Don't do that. There we go. They're so cute and big and furry, and they seem to just be eating the stuff in their yard, like in the lawn, not not garden. She's a gardener, too. So I kind of keep an eye on her stuff, because it's like, ah, you know, you work hard. And um, the storms over the weekend took out half of what I thought was the Bella Roma. That's why I went down to, I wouldn't have even realized probably that they had sent me the wrong rose because it was the pink one's pretty um but half of it was dead laying on the ground because the wind just flattened it. it had all the flowers they were open and and beautiful pe perfect and then all on one big giant stem of course so it just threw those all right down to the ground i think did i did I miss a flower? I, I'm i seeing a... Oh, that's the bud. Oh, so this is the bud, and you can... Oh, I did do the bud. That's the one I did. Okay, I was going to say, I didn't think I missed the flower, but... All right, so we're going to do this one right there. This is the part that takes a bit of time. It's just the positioning your dies but believe me you want to do it it's a lot better than than fussy cutting all of these out oops i shifted it <laughs> i shifted it and i think i shifted it badly let me get that and then <laughs> i better shift it back again before i ruin it get that leaf out Turn this one. I don't know if it's concave the other way. They they get concave, and so I do move them around back and forth, up and down, trying to keep them from getting so concave. I can't move them. Can't get my magnet to stick to my dies. You can tape them down. That actually does work pretty well. Just another step I don't want to do right now. Okay, there's that one. These are so cute. Look at that. I love these flowers. They're so pretty. So my rose out there is going to be fine, I hope. I don't know. Since it's a new one, it's got one branch left. And it seems to me like a one snapped off earlier in the season, too. So I hope it's not just a weak rose. Come on. That's just not working there, so we'll come back to you.
the magnet base plate underneath, it just definitely has its own ideas about where, what's gonna stick to it where. So if you move your paper <laughs> to match where it wants to hold that die, it's actually easier than trying to force the die to stay where you want it. Let's shift it again, there we go. Go ahead. And one more. I probably don't even need all of these leaves. But we'll do it. And then I'm going to cut out that other one. And then we'll see how that works. Because that one's going to go a lot faster than this one did. That card. The yellow card. Okay. There we go. Now let's cut out our, our flowers and leaves all in one go. We're going to use these dies for the, we'll assemble this card in a second. I need all of these, oops, oops, little delicate ones. We're going to use this one right here, okay, and I, we're using this one I think we're probably using this one. We might just use all of these. I'm not real sure. I'm not real sure, but I think we are. So these are all the dies that go with the stamps. And this big one, of course. Okay, and then these dies we're gonna use this with white cardstock. Um, where's the white? There you are. Okay, we're gonna cut these all out from white. And then I'm gonna just sponge the colors I want. So you can kinda, the reason I did this is you can cut these out. It's very delicate, they're very pretty. And then you can set them aside and then later on, you can decide what, what color you want your card colors to be. Okay, so we're just cutting all of those things out in one shot. Hmm, that's looking like it didn't quite cut the top enough because I have so many dies going here. So let me take out these pieces that are already cut. And then we're gonna run these. I'm not gonna take remove those. I wanna make sure that those are all cut through all the way. If you do a lot of thick dies all together like that at the end, sometimes that happens. Okay, we'll run it through again. Make sure your plate's all the way to the edge there. Okay, and it was just the top, I think, but I'm gonna run it through a couple of times just to be sure. Now let's see how it goes. Yep, that cut out really nicely. All right, so and I think, I don't think I shifted it at all. If you shifted it at all, you'll, you'll have to do it all over again because it, it will have ruined it. You know, that's just the nature of those things. Okay, so let me get all my little pieces out of here. And then we will set these aside for now and finish our pink card. And then we'll go to the lemon lolly one and do that one really quickly. Just got a scrap piece of lemon lolly. Okay, that one's done. So cute. I don't even know if I used that one. I don't see that one on my card. I probably didn't even use it. And that. And that. Make sure all the pieces are out of there. That one looks pretty, pretty good. Maybe just a little piece there.
when you get your die cut machine, make sure you get the die tools. Um, the, it, it's the pick and this little brush. You're going to want those. It does make using your dies a lot more fun. And this. Okay, it looks like it cut it all really well. Let's pull you out and see. few little pieces there, 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 okay, and then these. Now I want all of these out that are the little, little hanger honors, little hanging chads. We want those all out. Some of them are part of the design, so don't pick out the things that are supposed to stay. <laughs> Those come out. Anyway, so we'll see how how long does a rock chuck live? You know, what are their life? What's their lifespan? They're getting big back there. I hope they don't last for too terribly long. But they are definitely having family going. Now we do have rabbits. Um, that have, I think, adopted not just our neighborhood, but like the whole little region here. Because Jeff spied them out underneath somebody's SUV. Let's set these off here. This morning, he said, do you see that underneath? I think that's a rabbit under there. Oh, yeah, it's a rabbit. Right. Okay. Now, we're going to assemble our card and go on to the next one. So I was talking to you about these borders, and let's make sure my card, my camera's set up better here, so you can see what I'm seeing. Okay. Um, all right. So what I wanted to do is just trim a tiny bit, I think, of my um my edge so that my borders match each other a little bit better. I can make my card shorter, but I don't want to. I don't want to make it narrower. And if it's this width, I don't want it to be too, too short. So I think what I want to do is just take a tiny bit off of these edges and they look pretty, pretty much the same right now. This one is at about three fourths to the edge of that. And that is two. So we're going to just take off teeny tiny bit now because it's embossed you do have to be careful it'll tear if you're when you're taking that small of an amount off sometimes i start in the middle of the card oops i shifted it and move it out because it can tear pretty easy so you do have to be careful of that oops there's a die i missed yeah now our border should match a little bit better all the way around Okay, if it's buckling, just try to straighten it out a bit. Because of the embossing, it might do that. Where is my glue? There you are. All right, so I don't have any ribbon going on here, so I can just glue this straight down. Uh, before, when you're doing a flower card especially, always check before you glue down these last layers to say, do I want a ribbon on here? Because I... If I do, I want to put it on before I add this layer. Okay. Perfect. Isn't that pretty? Oh, it's so pretty. And then decide how you want your, your flowers. You just stick these on here however you want them. You can't really go too wrong. I might figure out that in a minute. Where's my other flowers? There they are. All right, so I want this one to go like this. I want this one to be standing up the most. So we're gonna do that one first with some dimensionals. And then we'll figure out how the other things are gonna fit all, all around it. I'm gonna just kind of stick my dimensionals more in the center because uh, 
I can I want to be able to shove things around on the side and then if I need to add more dimensionals to secure this piece a bit more I can add that in afterwards but if I if I'm putting a lot of other things around it I don't want to get too many dimensionals at the edge there so we're going to put that like right there oh I forgot my yellow let's get some lemon lolly or something I think daffodil delight will work better let's do dark daffodil delight so we can see that that yellow and then we want this to be here Okay, you can put a dimensional on that. Looks like it'll probably work okay. I've got a big piece here. We'll stick you on here. Like this and this. Mm, I think that may be right there. Will that work? Yeah. Oops, I have a, a backing on it. What happened to you? Hmm, that one's not functional. Okay, so right like that. And then we want one of these back here. Oh, like this. Um, this one I'm going to just glue on. So that it's looking like it's in the back. There, and then this one we'll put. Oops, we'll put our dimension sticking to me terribly. <laughs> shame, shame, shame. Like very terribly. This one right here. And wow, one leaf. I think we only need one leaf. It may be right out here. We don't even really need that, but we'll stick one on there anyway. Okay, like that. And then that card is almost done. We have some extra leaves if we wanted to use them on another card. Isn't that pretty? We'll put that on this. Again, decide do you want a ribbon if you do do it now or forever hold your peace because your chance is going to be gone as soon as this gets glued on there okay so nice and then your embellishments and you are done with this one Now this one, I wanted pink embellishments, not these. I didn't have any bubble bath embellishments. So um, you can just take your um, polished pink or your bubble bath and then just color the ones you're going to use, okay? They can color. Why aren't you coloring? Let's do the dark one. There we go. And then you can color them. We're going to use four of these. Okay, we're going to do... I'm going to take this out here. One popped off. This is why I don't like taking these off the card, but it's sure easier to place these if you do it this way. You just get the edge of your plastic wet. Oh, come on. That is so annoying when that happens. <laughs> like majorly annoying. Okay, there we go. That there. And then we want three here. Like one. Two. And a third one right there. Perfect. And I lost one. It's probably stuck in there somewhere. I don't know where. All right. That card is done. And let's finish the other one really quickly. You're going to just do a tiny bit more sponging on this next one. Okay, so we've got that one. This one. 
and use all of these. Actually, I'm not using any sponging. I'm just coloring these. Okay, so let me take out the pieces I don't need to color. There's still another piece there. I'm We're using Lemon Lolly, so we're going to just turn these into Lemon Lolly. You can sponge them. You can, but I need a piece of scrap paper in here because I don't really want to color my board. Let me grab them. Scrap paper here. Oh, that's vivid. What else do we have? <laughs> like, that's the worst. <laughs> Hello. There's got to be something back here. Oh, here we go. This is nice and roomy. These big embossing folders that we have this year. Really nice and big. I have lots of scrap paper. So, just this and this little bud. I don't know if I'm even using this little bud. Okay, so Lemon Lolly. Um, let's do, that. Uh, that is, oh, this is Daffodil Delight. I want Lemon Lolly, not Daffodil Delight. We want very light yellow, but let's go with the dark Lemon Lolly. Okay, yeah, it's pretty dark, so I think I might do dark here. And then we will put, I'm keeping my ones here so I can see what's, what's colored and what's not. Oh, and then this one. Okay, like that. And then we use our light lemon lolly to fill it all in. This is so pretty. Maybe my So Saffron was what I used. This seems a little dark. This is such a pretty dye. Look at this. Don't you love that? It's so pretty. Now you could cut, cut it out of cardstock, but that's colored cardstock, but. Um, you know, I was thinking, let's just color it. It's not that huge of a bit of paper to con cover the colors. And you could use as much detailing with your coloring as you wanted. You don't have to use much. It's not, this is not hard. You could, if you don't want to use up your ink from your blending pens with it, you could just gently, gently sponge you could probably even just take your ink pad and go honk down on it if you're if you're wanting to be a bit more daring. Okay, and then that's you just want something very light that's the green. Um so let's do I do really like shy clover. Um I mean uh, shy what is it? Shy shy shamrock. But I'm going to get out our light call me clover. That one's pretty good too. This is an old color and I like it. It's very green. This is a little bit more of a green green than our, than the old olive I think I used in the other one. You do just have to be a little careful here around your petals. So that your flower petals don't end up getting green on them. See how quick and easy this is? It's so super fast. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I hope where you are, you're, you survived the tornado and other bad weather that was coming around. It's hit a quite a big swath of the United States, and we're not done with it yet, apparently. It was bad in Oklahoma. We sure heard it last night. Jeff said, is that the heat, is that the air conditioning on all the time? And I said, yeah, I think that's what it is. It's, and then we, I opened the patio tour. It's like, no, is that thunder? Is that the sound of a tornado? <laughs> We've never heard the sound of a tornado. We haven't lived here that long. It was pretty loud. It wasn't, it was, if it was thunder, it was a constant, 
constant rumble of thunder and we've never heard that before. I said, I think I've heard this before, but I just assumed I was hearing the, um, uh, the heater when it was in the winter. I, I thought it was the heater, but I think I've heard this before and I've always wondered, <laughs> well, what am I hearing? It's pretty scary actually, but, um, Anyhow, we were blessed that nothing happened here in Springfield. We're pretty lucky to be where they don't tend to come in. Okay, so I think my leaves are pretty, pretty well done. You can, um, if you miss a spot, get your, your yellow back out, touch it up. I think I missed a bud right there. All right, that is done. It's, I kind of liked this lemon, but, or yellow, or green. My voice, my words, I can't use my words. But we're going with that. Now for this one, I just used this lemon lolly piece and I stamped today's tiles on it. Now this today's tiles is retired, terribly sorry. But I really liked it. It was such a nice one. It has, it's a two-step two stamp thing and uh, very easy to use. It's um, photopolymer, so you can see right where you want to put the ink. And we want lemon lolly right on to lemon lolly. Okay, so we're gonna just try to do this as straight as possible. I'm gonna, I'm trying to think, how do I wanna do this? I think I'm gonna need to put the camera down lower so I can get my head right over this. Cause you do wanna do it as straight on as you possibly can. It'll be forgiving if you don't get it perfect. But we do want to do it as perfectly as we can. Okay, now I'm going to have to get my edge here. Like that. And like that. And that's pretty good. I don't think I can get it any better than that. I love it. Isn't that pretty? Oh, you can't go wrong with yellow. Yellow is really nice. And our stamp. Now remember, you can find these old things on eBay. It's just that if you buy them used um, or after they're retired, they might even be brand new, but you're going to spend more. Usually. Now this set, I bet not. You might be able to get a really good deal on this one. I don't know. That's, I'll leave it out there so you can see what it is. Now we're going to put this right on top of our, our card and assemble everything right on top. Look and see if there are any edges you don't like. They actually turned out pretty good. You could emboss it, add some extra texture, but it would kind of fuddle up my lines. <laughs> is that a word, fuddle? I don't know, but I think they would. Let's put that, that edge down on the bottom. That's the funky edge that I did there. There we go. All right, and then we've got our celebrations one. This is what I'm gonna stamp on, and you just wanna use whatever green you used for the, the uh, flowers. And so do I have, what did I use? Just, I think I used Call Me Clover. So let's see if I can find Call Me Clover. That's that's a color I don't use all that much anymore. Ah, there you are. It's Call Me Clover. And the stamp set is, I'm blessed to have you in my life. I love that. So you can see right through to it and we're going to put it 
Oh, like right about there. Isn't that cute? All right, and then that's it for that stamp set. And I didn't put any ribbon or anything like that on. We're just sticking dimensionals to the back, and I'm going to use up all my... Oh, there's still some of those. Let's use the edge. Okay. I'm using up my edges here. Seems like they, it's like the end of your piece of soap in the shower. <laughs> These little edges, they like go forever. So I kind of like to use it up all in one, one shot. Okay, and then it's easier to manage what's left on my board. Oh, that's a sticky, so we'll take you. All right. Hmm, something happened to that one. We'll throw that one away. I get some with these last bits. This is what happens. It starts sticking to itself. What's sticky and what's not. All right, then we'll put our green on the top for the sentiment. Just position this in the middle. And now your little flowers can go on here, however you want. We're gonna set it, uh, let's do it like, oh, I did it like this, okay. That and this. You just want to position it however you, you want it. This is going to be the main one. So let's take our dimensionals and you can get your mini ones out if you need to. You need to just put your dimensionals where there's not an opening. So you're a little limited on that. Let me get a piece of get my mini dimensionals out. Uh oh, I, I think, do I have anything but black mini dimensionals? I think I don't. I don't see, I don't even see any dimensionals on that one. Well, there were a couple, but they were, they got stuck to the black ones. That's no good. Come on, I'm sure I have no, I don't have any mini dimensionals, so let me, not that, that are not black ones. This paper's too light, that would not work, so we'll just snip a little bit there. And then you can use your pieces of mini dimensionals wherever you need to. One there. And one there. I hear Jeff walking around out there. <laughs> Probably thinks, what is she doing? Is she still doing it? It should be done by now. No, no, actually for two cards, I'm doing pretty good. It takes a while, you know. All right, so with this one, we're gonna put like right here. Oh, no, yes, no. I don't want those leaves to be on the edge there. So we'll go like that. Okay, and then this one. Again, we're gonna have to snip, snip. And the fat one 
we'll put there and the skinny one we'll do right there doesn't it look delicate and nice we had some nice filigree backgrounds and i haven't used all those up they are really pretty let's make sure all of my dimensionals are going to stick to this white label that i have on here now if you want to add any more leaves we did do some this one i'm going to glue right on you can't really it's very hard to uh, do you could put glue dots but um you're not going to want to do dimensionals on something as skinny as this so we'll just do some glue we do have a fine tip glue, but I've been using this glue for so long. <laughs> I've kind of gotten used to it. That one's sort of getting to the end of its days, too, that bottle. So it makes it easier, actually. Okay, I don't think I need these extra leaves that I did. I don't really see a spot for them. And I want to put my um, beads, my um, elements. What are they? the embellishments, that's what they are. I wanna put those on there. It is almost time. So we're gonna just put a whole bunch of these on here. We'll do, some of these are pretty big. Maybe we'll do a couple of large ones. One there, and one there. And then we'll use some of the smaller ones. There. Yeah, let's do a really small one here. We can't have too many of these. <laughs> They're so pretty. Very shimmering. Aren't they nice? I love those. I, this is where I always get carried away is on that. And that is what we did. So this is Magnolia Mood. You can still get it with your discounted bundle price. And uh, it's definitely worth buying. You'll love it. It's really good. These other things you will not be able to get. Um, I think Countryside Cottage for this die. I believe those Country Corners dies are available. Um, the masks are not, but the, again, these are things just to keep looking for because they have them all the time. We do these background dyes like pretty often, so if you just are watching for those, you know, you can you can find those too. So anyway, I'm just trying to get some of my things put away. I have to figure that out in a minute because that's not really quite quite going together the way I wanted it to. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it and all the sharing that you do and all the card making you do. You are making people's lives happy when you send them things in the mail because mostly we get junk anymore. It's nice to get some good stuff. Thank you again. Let me, I can't write. There you go. There you go. All right. It is a good day. I think I want to go out and ride my bike, but I bet that there will be too many people out. I'll have to wait until tomorrow when everybody went back to work, except for Jeff and I. <laughs> All right, next week I will be doing something. I'm not really sure, but it'll probably be doing something new. Um, the, these are the last of my um, online cards, I think, the online-only ones, but I really enjoy them. They were a really good... It's nice that Stampin' Up! is putting online things out more often. Um, they don't sell out, for one thing, as much. You do definitely want to join a team if you are not, because then you get to order things early. And if you don't, it oftentimes is sold out by the time you get to it. That is so one of the reasons I'm a demonstrator, so that I can get the stamps that I want when I want it, and I don't have to wait for months and months. Have a lovely day and a great week. Blessed Memorial Day and... Uh, Take good care of yourself. See you next week. Bye.